Okay, so I just started the recorder. Um, so uh, welcome everybody to today's uh, teaching and learning and UX call. Um, just a few announcements before we get going. Um, the, uh, the dates for SakaiCon, if you've not already marked your calendar for that, um, that's going to be happening this summer in July, July 18th and 19th. That's a Tuesday and a Wednesday. And um, it will take place at the School of Information at the University of Michigan. Um, and then there's a day at uh, Dr. Chuck's Lake House on Monday where there'll be some just sort of informal gathering and team building. Um, so if you're interested in attending in person, um, you know, please keep that in mind with your you know, travel planning. There will be um, a, most of the program available online if you're unable to go in person, but there will be a few sessions at the beginning and the end of the day that will be only for the face-to-face -face folks. So um, we, we should have a, a more firmed up schedule available soon, and we hope to have registration available by the end of April. Um, so uh, more details to come, but just kind of earmark those dates uh, if you would like to attend either online or in person. Um, also, um, coming up later this month, there's an online Xerti conference. Um, some of you may remember we've had uh, a few demos of things in Xerti, and um, the escape room that I did was built in Xerti, things like that. So there's a, um, a Xerti conference happening on April 19th. And it's primarily based in the UK, so the timing is a little difficult for us here in the US, although those of you in Spain would probably love it because it's closer to your time zone. Um, but uh, it, it, the sessions run from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. GMT. So that's for Eastern time, that would be 4 a.m. to 11 a.m. East Coast. Um, so I realize the time's a little diff difficult for us, but they are recording all of the sessions. Um, so if you wanted to watch some of them afterward, um, I'm going to try to organize like a watch party or something to maybe get together with a few folks <clears throat> and watch some of them together. Um, but uh, I'm going to be doing the um, the <clears throat> uh, Sakai Guru escape room again. Um, in the afternoon time slot. So I'll be doing that. I think it's like at nine something. It's my session. But you can, might be able to catch a few of the, the later sessions, um, depending on your time zone. So anyway, it's a free registration. I encourage you guys to go and check it out and see what other people are doing with Xerti in other parts of the world, because there are some um, pretty creative sessions. That link there, it's actually, um, Etherpad didn't recognize it as a link but it is a, a web link. I'll paste it into the chat here. Um, that, if you type that into your browser, paste it into your um, browser, uh, should take you to the page where you can see the whole program and there's a link to register. Um, so uh, so that, that's actually a link you can paste into the browser. Um, all right. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, we also have um, some UX testing that's um, available this week. We wanted to get some more eyes on the new portal design for 23 before it goes out with the 23 launch later this summer. Probably we're looking at June right now for the um, the dot O release for 23. Um, but because it's such a change from the way site navigation works now to what it will be in, in 23, we wanted to get more eyes on it, get some feedback now that the development is largely done. Um, so uh, I'm doing some individual UX tests with folks, and there's a link there that I also sent out via the email list. I'm looking for typical end users, so if you've used the QA servers a lot, you're probably not the best person because we want to get people who haven't really seen it. Um, but feel free to, to let your folks know at your institutions. And I also, I have a link here. There's a Google Doc linked in the Etherpad um, to a test script. That's actually the copy of the test script I'm going to be using. And what I would like to encourage you that are regular attendees at the teaching and learning call, I encourage you to take that 
test script and walk through it on your own and record your own observations. And maybe if you have time, even um, walk through it with a few folks on your campus and just kind of make any notes of, you know, things that they notice or, or um, observations that they have as they complete the tasks. It's a really short script. It shouldn't take much time at all. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is any feedback that you guys have gathered um, bring to our next teaching and learning call, which will be on the 19th. Um, and we can talk about it then as well as the results from the individual sessions that I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. So um, I encourage you to, to uh, participate in that because, again, we'd like to get as much feedback now while we can still tweak things and fix things if there's anything missing, anything that needs to be um, a little smoother for the end user. Um, we want to know about it now so we still have time to, to fix it before release. So, um, and finally, we had a lot of announcements today. <laughs> there was one more thing that came from Patrick um, from Aperio, he, uh, an uh, open source software community, he didn't specify which one, but he said it's not an Aperio project, is looking for paid um, people to help moderate their discussion forums. Um, apparently some of the discussions can get a bit uh, heated and they want to make sure that somebody's in there sort of moderating and kind of making sure people behave themselves and, and stay on subject. So um, if you're interested or if you think any faculty at your institutions that are you know, experienced discussion moderators might be interested, um, it would be a, a paid um, capacity. I don't know how much they're paying or what sort of hours they're looking for. But he said that if anyone is interested to contact him. So I've included Patrick's email there. Um, and you can reach out to him directly if you're interested. And he'll, um, he's already reached out to the, the open source community uh, to get more information. So hopefully he'll have more to share on that. Um, all right. So with with that, I am going to turn it over to our uh, folks from Spain to um, demo the PASAM um, software for us. And Miguel, are you doing that? Or who, who's going to be um, driving? It's going to be Juan Marin. Let me introduce you to Juan Marin, which mm -hmm. is uh, an instructor in UPB. And he's going to provide a demo of, of PASAM. The intention of uh, EDF and, and, and UPB is going to work uh, closely on PASAM and also on, on Polyformat, which is based on Sakai, uh, to provide a more robust integration between assignments and, uh, and PASAM. So Juan Marin is going to make a demo about the PASAM part, which is an exciting tool. And, and it and I'm being the I... moderator, so you should be able to share your screen if you yeah. like. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, okay. I see the button uh, here, and I will share this screen. And okay. I am going. Okay. Uh, well, um, first of all, thank you. For the invitation, I am going to, to show you uh, how we work with the um, PASAN system and also what we plan or what uh, things we could forecast that, that could be the, the, the way to evolve or integrate with uh, Sakai. And, um, and we figured out uh, two, uh, two iterations. And the first one, I suppose, is um, easier to, to implement. And of course, it's, uh, it's in your side to, to decide how to to manage that. Uh, uh, the first part, I would like to show you how we work at this moment. So we have our assignments in Sakai platform. So uh, the first thing we we have to, to work with this uh, system is uh, we choose the the assignment we want to import, the, 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 the information we have in the assignment, the, the, the PDF or the documents that uh, students has uh, uploaded to the Sakai platform, we download the data, we use the attachment, we, we choose uh, the, which information we need. And, and in fact, we need only a, a attachment uh, for, for the task or the assignment the, the student have. 
and then import in our platform. Uh, we make this process that uh, uh, it's, it is more or less uh, easy to do or uh, comfortable to do, depending on how much uh, um, works you, you have to import each, each time on how many of this kind uh, of, of words you, you have. Then we design the assessment criteria for one activity. In this case, it's, uh, the, 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 the criteria we saw here is very easy because it's, you have only one criteria on three levels. Uh, uh, you compare uh, one uh, work against another word. So uh, students upload words and then the platform is going to compare. And we have only two levels. Uh, link side is better than right side or both are uh, similar we can add more levers so you can uh, very uh, uh, extremely uh, better uh, slightly better the same and the other side of the of the of the scale and when we have the scale in this case uh, you have uh, the our platform present both um, assignment bo both uh, documents for different students and you as a teacher or rater because you can use your uh, uh, students as raters also uh, decide uh, which one uh, fit better the, the criteria you have used in this case pues, uh, i can choose the the uh, left side or in the other case uh, we 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 use the other and when we end the round of uh, assessment or comparisons, at the end, the, the, the platform show us the, the results. The results are ordered. So in the, uh, in, above in the list are the, the best works. Uh, it, uh, that is the, 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 the works that are winner more time, more, 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 more times in the, in the sequence. And in the lower part, you have the, the worst one. And if there are several, like in this uh, uh, row in the, uh, with the number six, there are four students that has the same, more or less the same quality for their work. Uh, there is other with just one student, there is other here with uh, six students. So all these students in this block are similar marks. And uh, with that, we rescale the, the number so probably the worst one uh, it is good or not so it's not zero level probably is uh, 50 percent or or whatever level you have and then the best one probably is not 100 or the best uh, excellent without uh, no problems is uh, only 80 percent of, of of your marks and then you can rescale uh, um, maintaining the difference of distance that these groups uh, has in the in in the assessment in the assessment part and finally uh, we uh, write these marks uh, in a manually way uh, in sakai so we get the load uh, manually the um, the documents use the platform to assess or compare the works and at the end we have some marks that we have to write manually uh, another time to uh, in sakai we use uh, graphs, uh, directed weighted graphs, in order to optimize the process. So we don't need to compare each work against others. It depends on the information we get at this moment. We the the, the system could uh, choose which uh, works uh, the system need to solve us to grade in order to uh, to assess or or put these uh, works in a in, in the net uh, in, in the net we, we have with the other works so the arts are the weights and the notes are the the works we are comparing we use at this moment the water stroke at model uh, we are uh, we have in the in, in mind the future to try with others uh, models in order to check if if they perform whether or or not and this is the uh, if you want to, so uh, I have a small video here, but it's, it's more or less the same that I show you in a static way. So it's comparing two, and then you can you can choose the one of, of them, clicking in the in the right side, and then you have another another two to compare. You can rotate if you need it, uh, um, and then you compare against others. You are you are comparing, you are comparing until 
the system has enough information to put the this data in a in a table uh, with uh, mm, with the words that are similar or better or or, or worse than the others. And then we have uh, uh, we scale here, and this is the process we rescale. We put a mark in the best one. We put a mark in the in the in the worst in the worst one, and and then we can import again in the uh, to the to the to the platform. And finally, this is why we figure out that we can work with with you. Uh, the first iteration, I suppose that the best or, or, or the most easy way to work is using API and retain. The, the data in Sakai. So uh, we need that all application can read the assignments. So uh, we need to show the, the attachments that are in Sakai and, and show it in, in, the, in the external platform. We continue to use the algorithms in our external plat platform and use all the part of mark management until we have the list of uh, of works and the points that we have uh, uh, agreed to put, to put in this in these works, and then uh, we would like to to be able to set, set, to synchronize these uh, marks with Sakai with a qualified grade uh, book of Sakai, uh, and then uh, the system flow. Uh, for a second in, in, in iteration, uh, probably we could put inside Sakai our logic and our process of compare. But uh, uh, probably it's better to make it this in in, in two in two separate uh, into split uh, uh, iterations because it, this allows us also to to change the algorithms or refine algorithms if we need uh, without um, uh, use or without put our hands on the Sakai code. So um, probably it's better that we have a very uh, fixed uh, algorithms. Uh, in order to put there. So that's uh, what I have prepared. And if you have any doubts or you need um, some clarifications. Does anybody have any questions? So is this um, something that students would be writing? Like the student is presented with two different things to compare. Or is this something that the instructor looks at? Yeah, right? yes, yes. You, you can com you can compare whatever you want. You can compare re reports. You can compare uh, images as uh, the example I, I put to you. You can compare uh, uh, whatever that you can show you can show in, in the screen in this uh, uh, two two parts of the screen. It's any kind of document. In fact, we can uh, at this moment we can present PDF, GP, G, G, uh, Word documents, and I don't know if we can show any other uh, uh, kind of documents. Juan, and you can uh, ask. It's, it's not limited limited to one page. You can use a report any page you have, and they can compare. And at the end, they say, okay, this report is better than this one. Or you can say you can have several criteria. So one is uh, clear, then it's complete, then it's uh, whatever you want to to analyze. And this, um, <clears throat> when when it's graded, is it done mm -hmm. by students? Is it done by instructors or both? You, you can you can use as as you want. You can you can use just with one grader. The the, the instructor is grading all the work. You can use the students, and you can use also uh, students and 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 instructors. And also you can you don't need that all the students. If you have a big uh, group, you don't need that all the students grade until the system uh, could assessed or all the you can you can make it collaborative so uh, some students compare only 10 uh, pairs of uh, works and other students other 10 or 5 or 20 and at the end the system has enough information to say that that's my proposal of rank and then you as as instructor can check it and you can change or modify the results so you can you can use as 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 you want you can use it as a formative way. You can also as summative way to to put marks or assess the the works. And you That's can use cool. and there are can be several structures at once uh, assessing. 
Very interesting. I think that'd be a great way to do peer review or peer grading, um, especially for large classes to give mm -hmm. more feedback um, without yeah. the instructor necessarily having to look at everything. And and sometimes, sorry, sorry. Uh, sometimes we we don't use to put a, a mark. Instead, it's a way to get the um, to to introduce some kind of uh, dynamism in our classes. So we 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 ask for a, a work and we want that uh, students learn by observing what other students has done and at the end also you can show the 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 best and the worst uh, after in your class without invest investing uh, personal time in doing that so students can learn observing and grading and at the end you can choose uh, this uh, from this order list you can choose two, three examples of the top and two, three examples of the bottom and then comment it in class. So it's not just to, to, to put a mark, it's also a way to, to make something more dynamic or, or get, in, uh, get the students involved in the process to, to, to learning and, and compare and assess. So the, the, the ranking part, the rating is all anonymous, right? So you're not gonna see a name necessarily as you're mm. comparing. No, 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 no. It's not necessary. But here, as this is my 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 platform. Is it the, the platform as a structure, and, and, and I can see anything. But you can show only the the the, the documents. You don't need to, mm -hmm. to 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 show at least who is the best and, and how they are ranked. If you don't want to do it, it's right. optional to you. And also, it, it's also you can you can mask the names and put the the work one to. Uh, it's it's the way we we parse the we, we pass the information i think that's really very very interesting idea i'm sure it could have several different applications for um different ways to do peer review or anonymous yeah. grading or um yeah. all sorts of stuff so that's that's very cool and um i think miguel you mentioned that Passam was going to be open sourced yeah 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 we have we have no problem with that that's very cool so miguel do you um have anything you'd like to speak to as far as the integration goes like the um what it might look like in sakai or the timeline um i know you guys have that kind of mapped out yes sir so right now, um, our plan is to begin the work as soon as Juan uh, can can dedicate us time because uh, he has you know many things to do. So we're going to look for for possible dates to have a meeting with him. Mm -hmm. As as we're very close to the university because we were we are like two kilometers away, uh -huh. we're planning to go there in person maybe and and, mm -hmm. and meet him and, and make yeah and grab some requirements about the sakai part and the pasan part and we're gonna take care bernie which is in the in this meeting right now is going to take care carefully about what's in sakai what's in pasan and we're trying mm -hmm. to provide a very strong um integration between both both parts because i think we have control over both parts so we we're going to explore multiple possibilities one possibility could be something similar to the content review right now in, in in assignments when 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 a student uploads uh, attachments they are sent to other services like turnitin and mm -hmm. turnitin provides um a originality report mm -hmm. so probably yeah. probably we're gonna have something similar in pasam uh -huh. uh, send the attachment mm -hmm. to there invite the instructor to grade in pasam using a link so the instructor goes to the submission directly and mm -hmm. then uh, rates the submission so that information is in sakai at the same time so i mean we, we're gonna work together upb and and mm -hmm. and uh, an edf on on this integration uh, and for the future we we will provide more more information about mm -hmm. especially about adoption because maybe this could be single tenant or multi-tenant i don't know that's that could be a good question uh juan marin mm -hmm. do you think this could be multi-tenant so, so, multi tenant, 
multi-tenant means multi-tenant means i mean right now pasam is only working for upb so yeah. imagine imagine multi-tenant i don't know as a service or as a common instance and yeah. multiple universities using the same uh, yeah, yeah 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 that is what that's perfect and also it's a, uh, you don't need to be in the same institution to to access to some we, we can something that can serve uh, not not only the platform also the activities for example no from now is quite uh, hard to, to if, if you have some subject that is uh, shared with several universities you could we could we couldn't use it because we couldn't get the information of, of other universities that you don't use sakai or they use moodle or something like that is hard to to fix so we can also have not only they can use in their own subjects we can we can have uh, or, or we can figure that uh, we can offer the possibility that one subject can be can be used or shared with several institutions at the same time correct yeah because it's a multi-tenant uh in the in, in the extreme case is yep. i mean it it, uh, it could be a possibility mm -hmm. so so i mean we can have a, a single instance of pasam serving multiple institutions in the future if yeah. we if we discuss it but yeah they, they connect they connect to one uh, code and then uh, okay yes better than, then you maintain it is easier to maintain an upgrade or hmm. yep yeah so yeah our plan is going to be is going to be work on this after the holidays because i feel mm -hmm. juan lives today for holidays like uh, well <laughs> okay so i am going to dedicate to something to, to, to some things that are long time waiting for <laughs> this is a different way to say holidays <laughs> yeah but i mean you know what i mean you know what i mean <laughs> officially the university is closed <laughs> yes 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 tomorrow tomorrow closed. so yeah uh, we're gonna we're gonna target one a feature for assignments which is going to uh -huh. be which is going to be add tag support for assignments mm -hmm. ability to tag uh, assignments and after that is going to be to be pasam so mm -hmm. bernie's bernie's roadmap is going to be add support for tags in assignments mm -hmm. and filter assignments by tags mm -hmm. so instructors can organize assignments easily wow. and, uh, and after that and after that is going to be pasam okay so the first meetings are going to happen when you're back Okay. Perfect. Have a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds great. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see how this develops um, because I, I, I do think it's a pretty innovative way of, um, of doing scoring and, and rating of, of papers or other media. As you said, it could be any kind of file. So that's very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Um, does anybody else have any questions? He didn't take all the time and we have extra time. Maybe I can provide mm -hmm. a fast demo of something which is pretty new. Yeah, and it's, sure. It's also, uh, right, I'm not sure thank you controls, so much. Thank you so much, Juan, Juan <laughs> no, Warren. Um, no, no, no. We really appreciate you um, to showing that demo. That was great. So I'm going to give the presenter to Miguel so he can demo some more good stuff for us. Who's, who's controlling the time? <laughs> I'm, I'm watching the clock. So you've got time. I, the only thing I had on the agenda today was the, the Passam demo and then maybe some Jira's if we had time. Um, but uh, if you have stuff to show us, I'd, I'd like to see it. <laughs> so um, ah, okay. Okay. go ahead. Uh, let me, let me. Let me show my screen. Ooh, share my screen. Yes. I think this thing. But do you see it? Yes, I do now. Is it is it Firefox? Uh yes. So I'm going to announce, I mean yesterday I, I said to the to the core team one one new feature for for UPB, which is the uh, the name that face game. Mm -hmm. So we confirm everything into the QA server and the QA has begun. And we're very excited to with the test because we made some internal testing and it went really well. So we're we're happy with the with the feature. So if you're curious about that, in the roster there's a new option which is the name that face. 
And it's a game that shows you a, a photo of the student. Right now it's going to be initials because the demo data provides initials, but in institutions with the photo enabled, it's gonna be the photo of the student. So we can we can we can we can play the game. So basically uh, you can you can guess the number of the students in this list and you can re-roll multiple options. And um, and uh, I mean if you continue playing the game, once once you have more than 40% of success with the student, it disappears from the list. So right now it's only it's, it's only listing like six users in my case. Uh, and once I continue playing, it rerolls only five. And when I complete all the students in the list, then I'm able to reset the game in that site. So that's the roster game. And as far as I can tell, the testing went well. And uh, and it's going to be tested by UPB soon. So that's good news. That's cool. I like that. Do you get like some sort of little celebration graphic if you learn all the names? Mm, no. <laughs> we have a sound. We 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 released a sound. So uh -huh. when you when you are when you guess correctly, it sounds, and when you guess wrongly, it it sounds another a different sound, and you can disable the sound. But no, there's no confetti for the moment. Ah, oh, that's could, disappointing. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. I think that would be a nice touch, but that's just me. Yeah. So that's the game. Um, I mean, it's a cool yeah. feature. Yeah, and it's uh, nice. It's a nice way to learn student names, or really any. It doesn't have to be students. It could be people in a project site. You know, learning the team members. Correct. Um, so, correct. Yeah. Very nice. Any other updates while you have the mic? Yeah, we have many. We have a long one, which is peer review for groups, uh, for a few, a peer reviews for, for using group rigs, using groups and self-report, but we are doing the internal testing now. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you can test it, but uh, we, we should fix some, some issues we detected in the early live support. So, but... We released that in the QA and now it's being fixed. So more things to come, like some. Yep, definitely. Well, when, once you um, do more of the discovery and, and have a better sense of what it's going to look like, maybe you guys can come back and do another quick update for, um, for this group. All right. Um, any questions for Miguel? All right, well, we do have a little bit of time left. Um, so we have some time to go over a few JIRAs. Let me see what we have in our parking lot. Um, there's one here, um, there's a couple from Alan and Alan's not here today. So we, why don't we save those for a day when he's actually on the call. Um, there's several from Christina, some conversations ones and a dashboard. Christina, do you have a preference? of which one to go over or to start with anyway. Nope. All right. Well, let's look at the conversation ones. So I'm going to copy those up into our list and we'll look at the first one here. I'll paste it into the chat. And let me go ahead and take back presenter. All right, so this little list was sort of my response to the what would it take to get conversations um, ah. un uh, unstealthed by default. <laughs> Okay, so the first one is greater differenti differentiation between creating a question or a discussion. Um, okay. You want to walk us through that a little bit? I, I don't know if it's pr pretty self-explanatory, but um, th there's not a 
very clear difference when you're creating one or the other. And it's actually even worse um, with the new permissions, you can break out um, creating a question and creating a discussion. So then there isn't the little boxes to choose between. So it just isn't very clear when you're composing it, whether you're making a discussion post or a question, unless you have the option to add both and can see which one of those boxes is slightly shaded, which again okay. is using color to convey meaning and bad accessibility practice. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> um, this is what it looks like now. Yeah, and if you toggle between question and discussion, the fields don't change. All that changes is which one is shaded. Right, and the shading is very subtle. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I agree. It's uh, not a lot of difference there between the two. So one thing I had proposed was even just changing the field names in the creator, have title be for discussion and have it be question for question. You mean here? Yeah. So for a discussion, it'd be title and details. And when you switch it to a question, it'd be question and details. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that would at least be some visual change there in this lower portion of the screen. Um, what do others think? I kind of feel like something should be happening on hover tail. Um, I mean, when you select it, it changes, but like when you hover over other elements, they light up. I kind of feel like something should be happening there. All right. Well, um, I think it's definitely, um, in need of more emphasis um so i agree i don't know what other if there's other things we could maybe add to this if anybody has any additional thoughts um i encourage you to to add them here in the comments i'll add a, a quick comment after the call um just to say that we agree with you because i don't see anyone disagreeing <laughs> so um all right, so let's take a look at this next one, also conversations. And this is clicking on a question should refresh the posts. Um, and you were kind enough to put a video on here. So let's watch this. Okay, I don't know if you guys heard any audio with that. I can't remember if I checked the box for audio, but if you no. go to that, um, if you go to that Jira, you can watch it. Hopefully you got the gist by just watching what was happening, but um, it's not refreshing. So she had, was logged in as both instructor and student and as a student responded to a question or a thread, but then as an instructor clicking on it, did nothing to show any new 
posts, you have to go up to refresh the whole tool before it refreshes the conversations, which seems a little counterintuitive. Um, I, I agree that I would expect it to refresh as well. Yeah. When I click I on it, whether it's two students or anything, I just had the instructor and student from other testing. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's another good one, um, which I think would be important to make it feel immediate. Cause if you're in there and you click on something and you don't see anything, you think, okay, no more messages and leave. And then you come back later and realize that, Hey, somebody responded while I was still on the conversation tool, how that happened. So, um, so yeah, that's a great point. Um, any thoughts on this one? You guys are quiet today. All right, so let's look at the third conversations one. And I will paste this in chat. Okay, so this is about lessons, the ability to add conversations, discussion, and most recent conversations. Yes, this one is super important. Um, one of the things that uh, is great about lessons is that you can put all of the you know, activities for a given week or unit onto a page. But um, right now, you can add discussions, you can add um, you know, either a forum or a topic link or even the most recent, but you can't add conversations right into the flow of a lesson page. So I think that's a super important one to see any kind of widespread use. People are going to want that. The other thing I thought might be a concern here was trying to control the naming so that it's very clear what is a, wh where you're adding a conversation and where you're adding a discussion. Yeah, let's take a quick look. I'm going to add lessons real quick. Of course, I pick a site that doesn't have any of the tools that I want to use. <laughs> um, all right, let's see here. Okay, so right now, when you um, choose to insert linked or embedded items, you have a link to a forum or topic or embed discussions, conversations. That one's going to be a problem. Um, and even honestly, I mean, I know there's still called forums and topics within the discussion tool, but I found it, found it a little confusing, I guess, to have it, if somebody's looking for discussions, they might not look for something that starts with an F, you know, um, or a T. So I would, I would say, I would maybe change conversations to posts or messages, discussion messages just so it's not in there so that it's clear when you say link to conversations, topic or question, um, it's clear that it's a different tool. What do you think, Christina? Did you have anything in your JIRA? I didn't look at it. No, just that it might require renaming to make sure it's yeah. very clear. And, then yeah. I won, and I thought about the idea of, you know, being able to separate out questions versus discussions as well. Right. Yeah, definitely could use a lot more clarification there. Um, Would you have like a different link for a question versus a, a discussion or? That's what I was thinking. You know, I, I hate to add a whole bunch of them, but it might even be worth adding three. 
Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, three. One, link to a discussion or topic, which would be like the forum or topic. You select a specific one from the list. Mm -hmm. And then embed questions and embed conversation discussions. So that if you wanted to embed, you know, the most recent ones, you could choose to have it like just show questions. Yeah, yeah, we got to rename this because you would have embed discussions, conversations, or embed conversation yeah. discussions. That's just that, that, that's the challenge. You got the two <laughs> and yet in conversations, the yeah. threaded post is discussions. So. Well, it's the same with topic too because. Um, isn't it, let's see that you call them topics. Yeah. Adding a new topic and it, a topic is either a question or a discussion, but in forums, you're adding either a forum or topic. So there's definitely a lot of overlap and not in a good way, um, with the naming of the two tools. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we maybe even need to break it out, like link to conversation tool and then indented under that link to a question link to a discussion and then link to forums or discussion tool link to a forum like you know mm -hmm. um to just make it really obvious which tool i don't know if you did that you'd have to make it smart enough to be able to pull whatever the tool name is in that site so if you've got you know some a school that does like a custom name for discussions or the instructor renames it in that site. Yeah. It Ugh. does go all confusing. So many complications. <laughs> but yes, we definitely need to clean up the terminology there. So um, I'll put my thinking hat on and see if I can come up with some suggestions. Um, and Christina, you always have great suggestions as well. So I encourage you to add those to the JIRA. Um, does anybody here have any thoughts on naming? I see Miguel typing. Not really. <laughs> okay. Um, I confess I'm not feeling terribly inspired today to come up with a whole new naming, but and it definitely needs work. <laughs> we we still we still didn't adopt conversation, so. It's pretty soon yeah. for us, you okay. know, Wayne. Yeah. Well, it's still um, in stealth mode. It's still experimental. So these are some of the JIRAs that are designed to get it out of experimental so that more people will adopt it so that we'll get more feedback on it. But, um, but yeah, that's definitely one that needs a little bit of work. So I will go back to this JIRA and try to put some suggestions and just um, note that we talked about it and we agree um, and encourage folks to chime in. All right, so let's see. We have one more from Christina that's dashboard. Let me oops, put this on here. Take off parking lot too. So dashboard, and this is in the chat if you want to look at the JIRA itself. Um, user dashboard, message of the day should be expanded by default. Um, this is just something that has annoyed the living daylights out of me and has kept me from um, considering having the user dashboard yeah overview yeah i know what you mean because it, you do have to open it and that's an extra step and if it's something that you want that you I wanted want to people sure. to see because that's why you made it a message of the day to begin with you know exactly. it needs so to be I, open I don't want there to be any excuse for the student to have not seen it right yeah i agree with this 100 percent um 
Do we have dashboard on here? And the user, I'm in as admin. Do you know, do you know um, off the top of your head? Um, I haven't looked at it, looked for it in trunk recently. All right. Oh, yeah, it is here. Okay. The message yeah. in the doesn't appear even if there is no messages. Oh, if there's no messages, it just doesn't show up at all? Is yeah, that... and if there is a okay. message, it would be just a collapse bar above that the tasks announcements calendar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It should definitely be open by default. Um, I'm going through all that effort to make a message of the day. They they better be yeah. seen. It. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so you get a plus 100 for me on that one. Um, all right, I'll go back and, and label these later. Um, okay, well, I think that's all of our JIRAs that we have in the parking lot. Um, I'm not gonna touch that Sam ago one with five minutes left, so we'll have to come back to that. But um, let's take a quick look at our upcoming meetings. So this was today, so we can take that off of there. Um, April 19th, we had originally talked about doing a discussion around specifications grading, but I bumped that for um, the UX test feedback because um, the testing feedback is a little more time sensitive since we want to get as much of that into 20 as possible. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll plan to talk about the portal and any feedback that folks have about the portal on the 19th, which is two weeks from today. Um, and then we'll then our next meeting in May, we'll, we'll um, go into the specs grading um, topic. So uh, also, if we have any JIRAs, if there's time after talking about the feedback from the UX testing, then we can talk about JIRAs as well. So, um, so that's what's on the agenda for next time. And again, if you are able to um, go through this test script, let me just open it up in case, because I didn't preview it before. Um, so this, I'm going to be putting in um, a login and a password on the, on the server. I'm setting up some sites so that the user who logs in has several sites to choose from. So um, I'll update the script once I have those sites set up for the user. Uh, but I wanted the user to have the experience of having several different courses to choose from and, and navigating between them. We're looking primarily at the, the portal navigation here. So we're not really going into the courses all that much, just kind of going from one course to another. And, um, navigating to different tools. So um, if you have time, if you could walk through these steps on your own and just, again, record your own observations, or if you have the opportunity to walk someone else through the test and just see what they do, make notes on anything they comment about, um, anything that they maybe have difficulty finding, or, um, you know, any little hiccups that seem like could use some smoothing out to make the experience a little friendlier. So, um, so that's kind of what we're looking for for this round of testing. And, um, and we'll plan to talk about it on the 19th when we come back. So I already have actually quite a few folks have signed up for the UX testing. So I should have some good feedback to share with you guys. Um, but uh, please take a look yourselves. And if you're really close to the interface, like I know, Christina, you've been doing tons of QA testing, so you've seen it way more than most. Yeah, um, which is why I'm keeping my yeah. little fingers out of your testing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, if there's things that have bothered you, please make a note and we definitely make sure to talk about that. Um, in, in the next meeting because if you've used it a lot and there's a anything that's kind of like a, a little annoyance that you've noticed over time, that's definitely something we want to consider. So, okay. um, all right. I forwarded it to my faculty. Um, Freddie said he was going to sign up. Mm -hmm. He's a relatively new full-time instructor, so he doesn't have as much experience in Sakai as some of the others, which might be good for. Yeah, that's great. That's great. We want um, all sorts of 
end users, those that are least familiar with the, the product are probably best actually for this because um, it will give us more information on what a new user would, would feel upon entering the, the platform. So, all right. Um, well, thank you guys for joining us today and um, we'll, we'll see you again in a couple weeks. So um, have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. See you next time.